In today's biased news, NATO soldiers get a Serbian welcome, trouble at the Iran-Afghanistan border, and Moscow is hit with a Ukrainian drone. This week, two Iranian border guards and one Taliban fighter have been killed after a clash at the border between the two countries. This has escalated tensions in the context of disagreement over water rights. The exact reason for the clash is still unknown, though a handful of similar incidents have occurred over the past several months. These have mostly been explained as misunderstandings. Prior to the clash, Iranian President Raisi accused Afghanistan of restricting the flow of water from the Helmand River to Iran's eastern regions in violation of a 1973 treaty between the two countries. The river, stretching more than a thousand kilometers, flows between Afghanistan and Iran, and is an important source for hydropower and water for the irrigation of agricultural land. In recent years, Afghani efforts towards damming the river have exacerbated Iranian fears over worsening drought conditions, which have become more extreme over the past 30 years. The Iran Meteorological Organization says that an estimated 97% of the country now faces some level of drought. As a result of the 1973 treaty, Afghanistan must annually share 850 million cubic meters of water from the Helmand River with Iran, as well as diplomatically resolve any issues that may arise. According to certain analysts, Afghanistan has only delivered a fraction of the agreed upon amount, worsening the water shortage as Iran's foreign minister requests both sides to, quote, follow the legal framework to solve the water dispute. Level heads prevailed after this week's clash, as both sides have chosen dialogue, with the Taliban's acting foreign minister meeting with an Iranian envoy to discuss water rights on the day of the clash. These issues are further exacerbated by the extensive sanctioning and diplomatic isolation both nations face from primarily Western powers and institutions. These systemic climate issues will only increase in frequency and severity if appropriate action isn't taken to ensure the rights of all sides in their access to water resources. So long as we continue to follow a system made by and for private business interests, the necessary state-level actions will not be taken in fear of harming profits, to the detriment of the environment and regular people that will suffer from conflict and deprivation as a result. In the Balkans, pressure mounts as NATO troops deployed to the north of Kosovo clash with local protesters. Over 30 soldiers were injured when the crowd overwhelmed them on Monday. This comes as the Serbian minority refused to accept the new Albanian mayors to their majority Serbian towns, after having boycotted the previous elections. The Kosovo government then sent in militarized troops to the north to ensure the transfer of power, which led to mass protests by the locals. In an interesting turn of events, the US, which is seen as a traditional ally of the Albanian majority in Kosovo, confirmed sanctions against Kosovo following the tensions in the north. Quoting the US ambassador, We will cease all efforts to assist Kosovo in gaining recognition from states that have not recognized Kosovo and in the process of integration into international organizations, end quote. Stipulating that this will be the case as long as Kosovo police aren't withdrawn from the three municipal buildings in the north where the altercations began. First Thought will continue to monitor the situation as it evolves. In China, the US accuses Chinese planes of provocation as they flew dangerously close to American ones, over a sea that is called the South China Sea. This is yet another shocking act of aggression from the same people who put their country so close to US military bases. Speaking of China, Xi Jinping has called on his top national security officials to think about worst-case scenarios and prepare for, quote, stormy seas. This Tuesday, at a meeting of the party's National Security Commission, Xi said, quote, The complexity and difficulty of the national security issues we now face have increased significantly, end quote. It's become increasingly apparent that the new Cold War is heating up, but it remains to be seen how far things will escalate. In Sudan, the official army faction, still at odds with the paramilitary RSF, has suspended its participation in talks regarding a ceasefire and humanitarian access, raising fears of renewed fighting that has displaced hundreds of thousands of people. In the US, even with the Federal Reserve embarking on its most aggressive tightening cycle in four decades, average home prices have fallen just 5% from their recent peaks hardly a dent compared to the 45% rise during the COVID pandemic. Home prices are likely to decline less than previously expected this year, before stagnating in 2024. 
Owning a home, once the central pillar of the American dream, remains entirely out of reach for entire generations of Americans. In Russia, a Ukrainian drone hit a building in Moscow, in a continuation of last month's symbolic attacks likely aimed at sowing confusion and fear in the Russian political and civil establishment. Wagner's Purgosian went on to criticize the Russian military and political elite following the attack, which injured two people, damaged property, and left many angry that the Kremlin had not better protected the capital city. And to end with some positively refreshing news, Paris authorities have announced the Seine is on track to be swimmable again next year. The river has been closed to swimmers since 1923, a hundred years due to pollution. But recently, the iconic waterway has been the subject of a major cleanup ahead of the 2024 Summer Olympics. Swimming competitions are scheduled to be held in the river, which has reportedly seen the return of native species. That's all for today. We'll be back day after tomorrow with more news. If you'd like to see episodes with more in-depth analysis, consider supporting the show on Patreon so we can grow and expand.